two days of paddling. Because I'm proud of it. that end. In this episode of Coaches I, we are once again going to do it slightly differently. We are doing uh, two different surfers. Now these are two people that you will, you will definitely know who they are. One of them we have reviewed already, one of them we haven't. Now I'm hoping that I pronounce this surname right, but we're going to look at the front side and back side tube riding of, there we go. Strider Wazalewski, and I hopefully I'll pronounce that right, but, but you know who Strider, it's easier if I just say Strider, but you know who Strider is. So Strider versus Kelly Slater, this is barrel riding, this is going to be fun, but although you like to say raspberry versus the goat. The goat. Check it out. <laughs> So before we jump into the iPad and show you the footage, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do also hit that notification bell. But a much easier way for you to make sure that you stay up to date with all of the content is to make sure that you have downloaded the Ombi app. Not only will you get all of the coaches eyes and all of the Surf Hacks lives that we do, you'll also get access to some exclusive content that is only within the app. And you'll also be able to find out about our paid online programs and keep up to date with all the exciting news that is happening here at Ombi. So there'll be a link either above or below this video. So make sure that you check it out. But anyway, let's get into the let's get into the analyzing of the footage. I think that this is Padang. I'm pretty sure it's Padang. Yeah. Uh, and so we got uh, we got Strider surfing first of all, and then we got Kelly surfing afterwards. Kelly's going to break it down. We're going to learn some stuff, uh, and hopefully I'll learn I'll learn enough that one so day I'll get barreled. If you think about Strider, he's sitting in the channel at the back, and he's always watching good surfing. Mm. And what you may not know is that the guy she rips. He's got really, really good, solid foundations yeah. and proper technique. Okay, so. I, I, I actually had quite a bit of fun. When I was going through trying to find some footage of Strider, I uh, got some footage of him at the wave pool and that kind of thing. I was like, what, I'm, not, like I'm enjoying watching this. This is, this is good stuff. So when he paddles in, all right, so straight from the get-go, see the little Oreo biscuit happening there? That's the, the chest up. Yep. He glides in, takes his time, all right? He's already analyzing and reading that wave. And what we call the coffee cup is that arm positioning over there. Now, just before you go any further, in the space of about 30 seconds, you've mentioned Oreo biscuit and coffee cup. Now, if you are new to Ombi, they are terms that we use that, uh, that are really simple trigger words and principles to apply to surfing to help you surf a lot better. Uh, if you wanna find out more about those, then everything will be revealed to you if you're gonna download the app or just just start consuming more and more and more of our content, you'll so find out. Basically, that coffee cup means if you keep your back hand in front of you. Bring it full screen. By keeping your back arm in front of you, if you rider, uh, strider, you turn your chest more front on and you get to kind of see more of the wave. Yep. And that's important because you kind of want to see where the lip's landing. If you're side on like that, you can't kind of see what the lip's doing. Yeah, otherwise known as poo man. Yeah. So, the other thing is that he's got a really nice little lean happening. Look how high the arms are. So that's a little bit pixelated. Now, the difference here between what I'm going to say forehand and backhand is the line that Strider takes and the line that Kelly takes. Mm. Now, because Strider can see everything, because his peripheral vision has opened up to that, yeah. as opposed to a goofy foot surfer, could be maybe their peripheral vision would be open up to that. It makes them take slightly different lines. Okay, so let's look at Strider's line. Okay. No sick. It's a great little barrel. Look at the little line inch. So he tucks the back knee. He looks super, super relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Almost like a fighter in a ring. Um, goes down to the bottom. He kind of reads the wave building up. So he stalls and he's waiting and he's waiting. All right, then Right now he's reading the bottom of the wave. Yeah. And he's saying, okay, this thing's going to barrel again. I've got to wait for it. So he's waiting for the wave to build up so, and so, stand Just up. quickly before you move on, you're, you're saying he's, uh, he's looking, he's got to wait for it. Is he sort of putting some weight on the back there to sort of stall slightly? No, uh, he's, right he's taking along the line. Okay. He's burning off speed. Oh, okay, yeah. It's like going down a hill on a skateboard. Uh, you almost go left, just right. Yeah. So Strata's gone, let's call it, all the way down to the bottom. And he's waiting. So, so he's 
checking out how much draw this has off the bottom so that the lip's going to throw in barrel. He's waiting for that to happen. And when it does happen, what do you reckon he does? Grabs a cup of coffee. See his little coffee cup arm, which is oh, yeah. that arm over there, right? A little bit of pressure on the back foot. He stores a bit more weights for it. Cool. Stands tall. Now, the higher you lift your coffee cup arm, the more it straightens your back. It yep. actually gets the knees to engage and work, mm. which is like loading up your shock, shock absorbers. And you'll see there's a lot of white water, so it's necessarily that he does that. Pass the coffee. Totally relaxed, totally stacked. Now, what stacking means is his ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, all in a straight line. So very, rec very comfortable in a, in a well overhead barrel, spat out. Oh. Look at the coffee cup, look at the posture. Like this. I got, I got my coffee cup. So he's doing nothing other than just standing with a cup of coffee in the hand. Is that my cup of coffee? Yeah. And then casual little pull out, getting claimed. <laughs> like, woo, how good is that? All right. And then Kelly's straight in behind. Is it? All right, let's clear the screen. And oh, what, what we're going to do is... So is this Mr. Slatty here? Yeah. All right, so. It's disappeared. So he kind of comes out of that high barrel. Now this is kind of what's interesting for me. I know we didn't get to see the barrel from early because it's a bit zoomed up. Look at how he fades that. Yeah, right. So he goes almost a little bit deeper than what um, Strata did. Yeah. Now the reason why he's comfortable fading that way is because he can see that much further. Yeah. Strata, when he was surfing, he could only see that much. So, um, backside tube riders are more comfortable fading deeper because they have the ability to read that part of the wave better. Mm -hmm. Okay? Does that make a bit more sense as, yeah. to, as to why he would fade deeper? Yeah. It's because his peripheral vision allows him more information yeah. about fading deeper. Um, does the bottom turn, also jams the brake on, and waits for the lip. Then he gets what we call front on. <laughs> so think about this, all right? When Strider was in the barrel, his chest was front on and he had his coffee cup out. Yeah. Does this not look like a very similar arm posture? If we took the, like, honestly, from there down, it's not too dissimilar from Strider. Mm, uh, Do you get that? Yeah. Okay, so. In barrel riding, the more front on you are, and his knees are pointing forward into a lunge, which Strider's knees were lunging and yeah. softening. Interestingly here, his, his foot looks like it's right over to the, 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 the wave, the, the wall of the wave side of the board. Is that, is that intentional? Of course. How else do you get your rail to engage and lean in and keep the pressure on? So you say, of course, like I asked a stupid question. I was, I was, I was, I was trying to highlight well, something. You, you are trying to in the process of making myself look like a numpty. <laughs> well, the whole point is you don't just stand on your board. You yeah. shift your weight around on the board, and that's why people always I freak out when people go, "Oh, what's my back foot doing? Yeah. It's moving. What's my front foot doing? It's moving. Yeah. It's never one thing. It's it's multiple weight distribution things." Don't worry, guys. I don't mind asking. The stupid oh, look questions. at how much deeper he is, right in the foam ball. So much more deeper there. It, it's like he's disappeared. I'm going to rename him. Oh, Kelly. that Ke thing was insane. From this day forth, you shall be known as Kelly Copperfield, the man who can disappear. Now, what's interesting, when he comes out of the barrel, he just stacks, stands up straight. He looks really relaxed. Yeah. If that was me coming out of there. <laughs> okay. So, both of those guys inside of the barrel had back straight, chin level, and the back arm was kind of forward more. Yeah. And that allows them better peripheral vision. When you are in a barrel, you kind of want to see where the lip's landing, and there's always this shock wave that comes up. You may have to go high or low mm. to kind of dodge that shock wave. Um, there's also the lip throwing. Sometimes the wave gets fat or there's a wobble. You might have to duck. You might have to go through that. So the more peripheral vision you have in that barrel the better and also the more front on you are the more your body moves in a natural way yeah if you are side on you can't bend your knees that way so your hips can't turn that way you start losing some of your function and you, you almost lock up 
Mm. Whereas these guys looked so casual and so relaxed because they're in that front-on position. Yeah. So, Ant, big takeaway from that? Big takeaway from that, um, I think, I think for me, it is that real focus on being, um, being as front on as possible when I'm inside, when I'm inside the barrel. Obviously, a barrel is the, is the, is the thing which is still kind of eluding me at the moment. Uh, in terms of a proper one, I kind of, kind of started to get close to it. Um, but yeah, that, that stillness, one of the, when we went down to the wave pool, one of the things that you noticed with me was even when it was a front side barrel, I was grabbing the board. But that whole idea of just bringing the hands and just putting them forwards. Being front on is, and relaxing. Yeah, just being front on and just being relaxed. Which so, was so di- you know, it's a big thing for me. And I see this time and time again, where people, when they want to start learning how to barrels, they almost surf too fast because they're nervous and they're scared. Yeah. And then they want to stall like the leash or their leggy is getting a proper barrel yeah. and they, they've missed it. And then they want to try to slow themselves down and fight all that water, okay? Whereas Strata and Kelly, what they did is they picked the line and they read the bottom and they wait for the wave to build itself up. Yeah. And then they almost want to backdoor that, that part. Mm. Whereas I think the intermediates are a little bit nervous they get comfortable, like, oh, okay, I'm comfortable. Let me try stall and get in. Yeah. So um, the big takeaway from me is that these pros are setting up the barrel and they, they're setting up for success. Yeah. Where the intermediate surfer dodges the barrel and then tries to go back. Re- re- almost reverse into it. Yeah, he wants to, beep, exactly. Beep, beep, and it beep. never pans out well. Now that you've said it, that's now my takeaway. <laughs> Don't back up into the barrels. Because that's kind of the stupid thing that I would do, yeah. which is go ahead of it and then hope, hold my hand and hope that eventually it would come over me and if I pull my hand out, I might just come back out again. Yeah, never really works. You get too much push. Don't use Anthony's method. Use the real way. Anyway, is that it? We good? Are we done? We finished that one there. Did you enjoy this? What, what, what was your biggest takeaway? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, as I said before, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do. But more importantly, make sure that you head over, join the, uh, download the app, join the community. It is completely free. There's loads of amazing content in there. And if, if you do want to take that next step with Ombi and really start to get involved and really start to become a better surfer, then there are the paid programs as well. But as I say, stacks of free stuff. So head over, uh, join the app or join the community, download the app, join the community. Link is either above or below. We'll see you in the next episode of Coach's Eye.